folks. Hey, welcome back to Fire Mountain Outdoors and episode three on our power station build. So we've got the batteries in, we've got the inverter mounted, and now we're going to start wiring up the connections between the inverter and the batteries and adding all our interfaces. So we've got uh, power to come in, power to go out, solar to come in, USB to go out, all of those things. So we're just going to go uh, into... Uh, time lapse and I'm going to get to work. <laughs> All right, the rule is new job, new tool. So for our, our main leads, the inverter came with this, it's like four gauge wire. Um, and the the proper wire size to run a 2kW inverter off of uh, 12 volts is single lot. So you can see the difference in the size of wire, and it's very substantial. So uh, voltage loss is a huge thing on DC uh, low voltage circuits. So we're going to put this better wire on there. Uh, in order to do that, we have to crimp these lugs onto there. Now, I could have went to the, the local uh, automotive supply place or welding store and had these made, but I didn't know exactly how long. So I went ahead and bought this tool. Now, I'm a big fan of quality tools, and I'm also a big fan of uh, cheap tools if you're just going to use them occasionally. And this falls under the uh, cheap, I'm going to use them occasionally tool. But it's a hydraulic crimper, and it's going to crimp these lugs on. So I've stripped the insulation off, just using my pocket knife. And now we're gonna put this lug in here and make sure we don't have any tails. These lugs are nice and flared at the end to uh, hopefully avoid what I just did. But to funnel all of these, all of these leads. The reason we're using welding cable is because it has a very, very high strand count. I was thinking about using some of this wire uh, but you can see this only has six conductors and it's very very stiff when i got this out of the recycle yard uh, i thought i was going to save a few pennies by using that and decided after seeing how stiff it was that i was going to re regulate that to other duties relegate not regulate but so now we're going to crimp this on using our hydraulic crimper and these are they're pretty cheap they're only like maybe 35 bucks on Amazon, I wouldn't I wouldn't attempt this job without that hydraulic crimper. They have some really big, giant manual ones that are about the size of a bolt cutter to manually crush these, uh, but those are also expensive, and uh, I didn't want to buy any of those. So uh, basically, we get that firmly on there, and. Make sure that we are all square. Comes with different dies for different sizes. And this puts eight tons of pressure on there. Eight tons. Eight tons. Tons of what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. So you can see that that puts a nice hexagonal professional looking crimp on there. And now this is actually going to be the negative side. So I'm going to put some black heat shrink on there and get back to wiring the inverter. <laughs> So we have got most all of the cables cut. So I've cut these cables and uh, heat shrink the ends, use the hydraulic cutters, uh, crimpers to crimp these on. And this turned out really nice. We laid this out so when this, this folds up that we're going to have enough uh, slack and some slop for this to pooch out. I don't want a bunch of stress on these terminals on the inverter. Uh, from folding or unfolding so we paid extra attention to that uh, inside here we put some smaller uh, uh, fuse block and a ground block 
and um, we're about ready to apply power to this. I kind of got, uh, I think we're going to put this uh, EP Ever charge controller in here. We ran into a problem where we were recommended this power supply to feed uh, the batteries and it doesn't put out enough voltage. It only puts out 13.75 volts DC and we need 14.4 volts DC at least. So we adjusted it up. So what we're gonna do now, it's gonna be kind of a cool thing is uh, we've got, we're gonna hook up the thing and, and uh, what happens is this inverter has big, big, big capacitors that charge like instantaneously. So what that means is there's going to be a lot of a lot of current really fast. So it's going to make a big spark. Um, and that can be that can be scary for a fellow the first time because you're like, wow, did I hook something up wrong or what? Did I just fry something? No, it just makes a big spark. So whenever you're hooking up a big inverter to a big battery that's fully charged, it's going to make a big spark. So you can alleviate that uh, by uh, running it through a resistor. And it'll be a little bit less scary, but it'll be less fun. So we're going to just prep for the big spark right now. Where do we expect that big spark to come from? Uh, that big spark's going to come... Right from that terminal? From that terminal when... After we hook this to this to that, Mark said there would be electricity today. I know Bob's been Bob's been waiting for the big spark all day, and I've just been disappointed. So here it comes. <laughs> here comes the big spark. <laughs> yeah, <buddy. laughs> you said it was going to be. Yeah, that wasn't. Impressive. I just, <laughs> There, now you know how every woman, every woman I've ever been with has been underwhelmed. <laughs> I told you it was going to be bad. I set it up and, and the, the actual, the actual event was, uh, short and really unremarkable. 20 seconds, really. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there's a big spark. So we've got, uh, the big wiring just about done here. So I'm going to tighten this up and then we're going to put the frame back on the inverter. And then we're going to test the inverter. All right, what do we got? Well, that, that turned out uh, even better than I thought. So uh, we've got the wire secured here, the inverter secured here, and it just folds up nice. I didn't want any strain over on the terminals. Uh, we secured it over here with zip ties, and it just folds up and shuts nice. And then look up here at the top, Bob. So we have our display i can tell that my batteries have 13 and a half volts nice it's uh 14 degrees in the other people's language that's uh, that sign language thing or that sign doesn't mean anything but right now we're not putting out any wattage so we're going to plug in a heat uh heat gun and just see what what happens first Let's dig through the pile of old crap, and we're going to plug in the temporary little cord. We're going to figure out a, which hole we're going to put this in. This is also going to have to... Oh, man, that's tight. Okay, but that's going to go there, and then probably right there. So uh, we'll have an outlet there, and then I'll probably have another one out in the front. But... Let's plug this in. Now, I had an issue when I first got this. Uh, I, I test tried it, and the BMS, I believe it was the BMS, turned the inverter off after a minute at uh, if I ran over 1,500 watts at all. And so I talked to the inverter people, and they said... Uh, oh, yeah, it's broken. Here's some money back. And then I talked to the Battleborn people, and they said, yeah, that was, was likely the BMS that's doing that. So I want to see if we can sustain. 
So right now, uh, I've got I'm pulling 1624 watts. And the temperature has risen inside from uh, 14 degrees to 15 degrees. Battery voltage has dropped down to 12 and a half. And we should start a timer. Let's see if I can get over a minute. Start the timer, clock, stopwatch, start. Okay. So this is well in excess of any of my actual anticipated loads on this. I know uh, we did the math on the on the pump, and my pump should only be at 1,400 watts when it's running. So we're within the capacity of the whole system. But um, so far, this is looking good. I am going to have to add some ventilation here um, on the sides. We can see that we've raised uh, 3 degrees Celsius on the display. The inverter has a fan in there and it's running. We went past a minute. It never, it, it didn't do that before. So hooking the other battery up in parallel, having them both, it looks like I'll be able to get the full 2kW constant 4kW surge out of this inverter. So, but we went up from 14 to 18 degrees in this short amount of time. Uh, we dropped our battery voltage from 12.4 to 12.5, or 12.5 to 12.4. Uh, we ran a minute and a half. I'm curious what it feels like in there. Okay, so this is the, the fan. I, I wanted to test that. I wasn't sure if those fans were pushers or pullers. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this out and put some screen on this side and then have an air intake down low over here so it draws air up and over all of this. But, so, so far, huge win. Uh, I was able to run 1,660 watts of load and it's been doing it for two minutes and 20 seconds that's hot freaking awesome it's alive makes me happy nice nice all right well we made great progress today uh we've got the inverter mounted wired and we've got the batteries mounted we got our our negative bus bar and our DC fuse box mounted. We have our one of the two AC outputs mounted. We got two blocked because I don't have the right arbor. I looked all over, finally found the right hole saw so that we could put in a, a whole bunch of our 12 volt, or not, 12 volt DC <laughs> outputs. Um, so we have these both in the cigarette lighter style and the another cigarette lighter style. But then uh, we're putting in some of these quick charge USBs so you can lap, uh, charge your laptops and your phones and all of those devices that we have that charge off of uh, USB. So we got a whole bunch of those that are going in the front, but don't have the right hole saw. Uh, I've got the right hole saw, don't have the right arbor to go in that hole saw, which is frustrating. Uh, so uh, everything came to a screeching halt. I'm going to work on that after I get a hole saw after work next week. And... Uh, we're going to be really close to getting this done. We ran, started this, ran it, tested, and I'm super happy with it. So, hey, thanks for watching. And uh, the next episode, we're going to be done with this, I do believe. And then we'll be uh, function testing it, maybe even putting some solar panels out to charge it. So stick around, stay tuned, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Hey, everybody, please like and subscribe. Never eat a molting rabbit. <laughs> See Thanks you later, for folks. watching. <laughs>